well. I've just forgotten that I need to go. Hmm. <laughs> Here I am. Hello. <laughs> I just forgot to put my phone on Do Not Disturb. So I thought I'd just do that really quickly. Um, I just wait a few moments and see whether we're live. Aha, hello. <laughs> Lorna, you said you weren't going to watch or you weren't able to. So hello, thank you. At least I know I'm live now. <gasps> thank you for joining me. It's Izzy Shishinsky of Izzy's Crafty Bees. I'm an independent Stamping Up demonstrator here in the UK in um, Nottinghamshire. I nearly said Norfolk then. <laughs> sometimes I'm in Norfolk, sometimes I'm in Nottinghamshire. But when I'm here doing my lives, I'm in Nottinghamshire. Uh, so thank you for joining me. Hi Sylvia. I can see you've joined me and I can see, hi, I can see your comments popping up. Um, I'm just going to try something. If you just bear with me one moment, I'm just going to see um, if I can find myself on, hmm, on the portal, but it doesn't seem to be coming up on live stream on the portal. I don't think it works like that. So that's fine. We'll just ignore that tech. I don't like to have too much tech um, actually um, on as I'm doing my lives anyway. I find it a distraction. Um, oh, you're going to the opticians. Oh, hi, Lorna. Yes, you're going to the opticians. Um, let me know how you get on. Send me a message after you've been. <laughs> um, so, well, thank you. Gosh, I'm all over the place today. <laughs> I don't know why. Ridiculous. Thanks for joining me today. It's Tuesday and um, it's the 7th of February 2023. And today I'm going to share two really cute cards. They're quite easy to make, but a really nice idea. Um, and not my, I didn't design these. I cased them. Um, I think I found them originally on Janet Wakeland's um Facebook or YouTube channel I can't remember from over a year ago but they're really nifty and nice way to use up DSP and you know we often buy it and stroke it don't use it or we buy it and we use a little bit of it and we don't use it all up now it's the last couple of weeks for celebration and we've got lots of free designer series paper on offer this year in our celebration um, until the end of February so I just thought I would show you how to use a bit up but before we do that let me try and think of three things that have made me happy this week or three golden moments this week so yesterday oh hi Renee hello thank you for joining me from the USA it's lovely that you're here um, you've joined me just in time for my three golden moments so yesterday I had a fab and fun day out with Lorna we had been um, hoping to have a day out for a little while so yesterday was the day and it was just a bit of fun we just went out for lunch um, to a local it's actually the Yorkshire Wildlife Park I went there last October with another friend Linda and discovered that you don't have to pay to get into the full wildlife park to have quite a nice little few hours um, out so yeah we had a lovely lunch and a giggle and um, looked around some of their shops there. It was lovely, really nice. Um, so that was one golden moment. I'm just trying to think back to the weekend now. Oh, yes, Saturday. So long story short, I was gifted a big box of tulip bulbs that should have been in the garden last autumn, towards the end of autumn, beginning of winter, sort of November time for tulips. And I was actually gifted them but only picked them up two weeks ago. So on Saturday, <laughs> I planted 200 tulip bulbs in and around my garden. Just wherever I found a space, I put these tulip bulbs in. So by Sunday and yesterday, I could barely walk. I was so stiff, I was like an old lady. It was so funny. But that was, I'm hoping it's going to be a big golden moment come spring when the tulips all come up my garden does not look like Amsterdam I am going to cry because it was hard work and then I'm just going back a little bit further Friday I went um, to my dancing class and it was week four of a four week we learn one routine over four weeks 
I missed week one. I'd done weeks two and three and then it was week four and um, we danced the whole routine all the way through and it was great. I really enjoyed it. It was really good. So they're my golden moments um, for this week. So I'm going to get on now. I'm going to have got my desk all organised. So I'm going to switch my camera around. Now this is the bit that just gives me trepidation. So I'm going to press the button. Hold tight. Let's see. If anything goes wrong, don't go away. I'll be right back. If it cuts me off, I'll stop. I really thought it was going to cut me off then. And excuse my squeaky chair. Every so often, my chair in my craft room, the casters need cleaning. Um, they get bits of scraps of... Um, uh, bits of, oh, I don't know, cardstock and all kinds of bits and pieces um, stuck in the casters and bits of hair and all kinds of things so these are the cards i'm going to share with you today now this is the one i did in class last week i did both of these in class last week but this is the actual one i demonstrated in class and the stamp set i used was this one it's called just reach for it because it's here on my shelf somewhere oh what have i done with it oh here we are flowers of friendship but I'm going to change it up a little bit and I'm going to use a different stamp set so I just altered it slightly just so I can show a technique and then this is the other one and this one has um, a pocket here for the bookmark to slide in and when you pull it out and turn it around it's decorated like so and this one actually you can customize so I will try and remember and, and show you how to customise that slightly. Well, I suppose any card is customisable. I'm going to sit down now. Um, no more comments coming up, so I will just sit down and move my squeaky chair. And then we'll get on with this demonstration. Um, I'm not going to do very much today other than demonstrate these cards. And I'll talk to you about products as we go through. So I'm going to start with this one. Um, I think so I'm going to use two different um, designer series papers and both of them are from celebration and I'm going to just pick some different colorways possibly um, to show you so let's just move those out of the way for the moment and I'll bring in the designer series paper I'm going to use so firstly we have this one it's called day at the farm I got this because I'd earned a celebration freebie of, um, for spending £45. And I have to say, I'm just going to confess and say that I'm not actually a fan of this designer series paper. So you may be thinking, well, why did you get it then, Izzy? Because there's plenty more on offer. And I got it because it's not always all about me. I wanted to showcase the papers and see them in real life. I wanted to show them to my ladies who come to my classes. And I also like to challenge myself from time to time and um, pick things that I wouldn't ordinarily go for. At the end of the day, it's a freebie. So never look a gift horse in the mouth. And for this card, I used a background piece from um, this pack of paper. I've actually used up all of this, um, these pages because I ran a class last week. So I haven't got any of that one left, but I have got some in the pack that I want to use. So not a massive fan of the animals. I love animals, but I'm just not a massive fan of this side. This side, however, ever so useful. So I'll be using that on masculine cards. I may even save that until Christmas. So that'd be really useful. I'm not a huge fan of these. To me, they're just a little bit, I don't know, they're just a little bit um, like naive drawings. They're just a little bit childlike. They would be absolutely fun to use with children. Brilliant to use with children. I can see that they would be super. So not a massive fan. I could probably fussy cut some of the trees and maybe use those. This is the piece I think I'm going to use. Um, again, not a fan of the drawings or the windmill. I've already cut a piece off of this one. But the reverse side is like a chicken wire 
um, almost like a little hexagon pattern. So this is the one I'm going to choose to use as my background. So I'll put this piece just to one side. Again, I think this would be fun with kids if you were doing a scrapbook page. <clears throat> but the other side is really quite pretty. It's a really nice shade of blue. It's, I think it's balmy blue. Really nice, cute, ditzy flowers. Again, that could be useful as a background. And this one, I just think, oh, my goodness. I'm, re I'm really sorry to the designer. But that just, I just think, there we go. There's my compost heap. <laughs> but the other side is really quite useful. It's a yellow and white um, stripe. It's a little bit like ticking, if you know what ticking fabric is, um, like a sackcloth um fabric it's really quite useful and that's really sh cheerful shade of yellow so all quite useful and usable and it's free paper so i wouldn't say no to anything that's free and that's one of the reasons that i got it the main designer series paper that will feature on this card is this gorgeous pack and this is the dainty flowers and i'm going to I've got options. I've actually got this one piece left of the uh, DSP that I used for my class project. And the reason I chose this one was because we're going to cut the paper diagonally and you need to be really mindful of the direction of the flowers and the direction of the reverse side. Initially, I had planned to use this piece and you can see I've already cut a piece and cut it diagonally. And then when I went to flip over, oh, disappointing. The reverse side has a direction, so my flowers would be upside down. Now, I can still use these pieces because I just steal some more from a different um, piece and I use the reverse side of that. So you need to be mindful. But these are beautiful. I'm not going to go all the way through them. But the one I thought I could use in its place is this one at the back. And this is just shades of green. I thought what I could do is use this for the card that I'm going to demonstrate today. And then I found this piece. So I'm actually going to stick with this one. Just one piece left. But really beautiful pack. And you can see I've already run a class. But I've still got so much left. I've hardly used any of it. And the reason I wanted to share this card today is that this is a really useful way of using up DSP. So I'm just going to actually pop all of these back in the wallet. Otherwise, there will be DSP all over the floor. So here we go. Beautiful. Really gorgeous. And I think this is one that I'll keep for myself to use for personal projects, even once it's disappeared from the shelves and I can't sell it. So I'm going to make this card using a piece of basic white thick cardstock for the card base. So let's go ahead and cut that. It's your standard size, 14.8 centimetres. I don't do inches, I just get completely mixed up with the inches so I'm just going to give you the centimetres and I'm going to score that at ten and a half centimetres just for your regular card base nice basic white thick cardstock now I need that layer to go on the background of this piece from the day on the farm and I'm going to cut this ten centimetres there's no direction with this so I can just chop away 10 centimetres wide and I'm going to do that 14 and a half centimetres long. So that's going to be my full background piece like so. And then this piece I'm going to cut to the same size so it should be 10 centimetres by 14 and a half centimetres. So just a tiny bit to trim off there. Now I need to trim this from corner to corner and I need to decide which which side I want to have on the front. And it doesn't matter, you can have a left side on the front of your pocket 
or the right side on the front of your pocket it really doesn't matter so I'm going to decide and I'm going to cut my piece in a diagonal from corner to corner and a tip I will give you here is to line up the corners in the cutting groove of your trimmer but start the cut from the middle of the piece of paper and work from the middle to the outsides the reason being that if you work from a, a pointy corner the blade can sometimes um, wrinkle your cardstock it can sometimes crush it and wrinkle it um, I will need my trimmer just to do the other pieces for the bookmark so I've chosen to use rich razzleberry which is a contrasting color it goes really nicely with the flowers on the designer series paper I did actually make this card a couple of times and I um, initially matched up the colour with this which I believe is Starry Sky but it just got lost the sentiment piece on the front got completely lost it didn't stand out and the bookmark was again lost so for the bookmark and the sentiment I need a piece um, let me just have a look I'm just looking at my notes nine centimeters by five so i need a piece five centimeters wide it really doesn't matter because i'm actually using a corner punch um i'm not using a tag topper punch or a die for this so five centimeters wide by nine centimeters is for the sentiment and five centimeters by 12 centimeters is for the bookmark so that's one if you cut that along the width which is 21 that's what i've just done yes yeah. so if you cut that along the width of your a4 piece and get one piece five centimeters wide by 21 and you just divide it by nine for the i'm just reaching over and double checking nine centimeters for the um, sentiment piece and 12 is for the bookmark I'm just double checking my measurements now I need a piece of basic white regular not thick I'll just take some from my pack here <clears throat> and I'm going to do the same I want four and a half centimeters wide and this time I want um, 11 and a half for my bookmark and I will want eight and a half for my sentiment, which will just leave a skinny piece to pop in the recycling. So there are my components. I also need some of this fabulous um, shimmer. I'm just going to check what this is actually called. I'm going to grab my catalogue because um, I've used it three times in class already. All three colours that come in the pack just need to find that I'll go to the back index and it was only on the third class that I was actually asked what it was again so page 15 of the mini catalogue and it's fine shimmer paper and it's absolutely beautiful let me find that correct page here we are it's part of the fancy flora suite but as we know in a suite we can pick and mix we can buy the items individually so it's this here on page 15 it's the fine shimmer 12 by 12 paper pack you get six pieces of 12 by 12 two in soft succulent two in fresh freesia and two in gold and it really is different to any shimmer paper that we've sold before it has a smooth texture it's reasonably thick um but it has this amazing sparkle really beautiful amazing sparkle and i've used that just for the ac accent if i could speak accent flowers for the front so just a small piece is all that's required so that's just finished with the trimmer i'm just going to stand and see if my comments are coming through hello maxine and hello mum that's lovely great my comments are still working and i'm still live smashing so I've just realised that I've got a tombow on my desk that's almost empty, so 
I might just have to be shaking. So we'll start with our card base and it's really, really easy once you've cut your pieces, a very easy card to make. Um, so you could decorate the back or you could choose to leave the card base naked. It would be up to you, but this is a really good way of using designer series paper. So let's stick this piece straight down. So now we're making, I can say, how are you all? Are you all well? Are you all fit? Oh, come on, Tumbo. Just stick with me for this one demonstration. Um, are we all fit and well? What are your three golden moments since I was here last week? Please talk amongst yourselves. Drop comments in the box below. And then the assembly for the front is really easy, but we do have to just pay attention if we have a piece of DSP that has a direction to which way round we stick it. So there's my piece. I've cut it diagonally and I'm going to take one piece. I'm going to hold on to this piece because this is the right direction my flowers are the right growing the right way and i'm going to just flip that one over so i can make a pocket to slot the bookmark in the front couldn't be easier now i want this piece to be behind this piece so i'm going to stick this piece on first and i am going to use tombow i'm going to turn it back over and i'm going to use tombow multi-purpose glue if you've got a brand new one and it's gushing out, you might want to just take great care here. If you've got a really old one that's not even coming out, <laughs> you might want to reach in your drawer and get a new one. But I'm going to put a very thin line of multi-purpose glue on, I want to say the straight edges. What I mean is the right angles, not the diagonal. And I'm going to carefully turn that over and position it so that the long edge is against the long edge and the short edge is against the short edge and pop some pressure just on those right angled edges. It's so simple. Now I'm going to turn this piece over and do exactly the same. Come on. And you should be able to see just my fine line of multi-purpose liquid glue. Now, I'm taking care how I handle my piece of paper so I don't get glue on my fingers. For you of you who are a little bit wet glue phobic, that's my big tip. Now I'm taking care just to line, make sure that this one is lined up at the bottom. It doesn't matter if you're very slightly out at the top because your eye is going to be drawn to the center anyway, but your eye will certainly be drawn to the bottom if you've got a gap um, where you can see the other DSPs behind. So just get that nice neat edge here and with Tombow you've got a bit of wiggle room. Now what this does, because you've overlapped, you actually can have a little bit of a, a gap here. So you can, if you want, um, carefully pop Tombow behind this piece and glue this piece down just to the center. I haven't demonstrated that because it really doesn't matter. When you come to slot your bookmark in, it should still slot in, but if you can see this, but when we pop our sentiment on the front, we can close that up a little bit anyway. So it should behave okay. So look, we've got a nice pretty card with a pocket on. That was really easy to do. Now we need to make a bookmark and a sentiment piece. And I'm going to decorate, um, that's for our sentiment, we'll do that in a moment. I'm going to decorate the bookmark using if i can just find it on my desk nature's prints i've chosen because i really liked this image here i thought it went really well with the designer series paper just a nice spriggy flower and i also liked some of the sentiments in this set so i thought i'd swap that out and we'd go with that one so i've got my bits and pieces ready in here got my stamp 
with the sprig floral image and I've picked out two sentiments hello there and a heartfelt thank you and I'm going to use Stampin' Right markers for my stamping technique and that was one of the reasons I wanted to swap out <clears throat> the stamp set for this demonstration so I'm going to go ahead now and ink up my um, stamp with my Stampin' Right markers and that one thing I will point out is that this technique works better on the red rubber cling mount stamps it will still work with photopolymer but i found in my experience it actually works better with the red rubber cling mount stamps and i also want to point out that i'm using stamping right markers these contain our regular ink the same ink exactly the same ink as is included in our ink pads this technique does not work with uh, stamping blends so it does not work with this type of marker because these are alcohol based ink markers and the alcohol based ink just dries way too quickly and it just doesn't work so you want to use the stamp and write markers so I'm going to go ahead and hold my marker flat and I'm going to just colour the areas of the image I'm using garden green it's not a green that I generally um, pick up first it's not my sort of first choice green so I thought I'd be nice to garden green and show, show it some love so here we go this is quite a detailed stamp so I'm taking my time you can do with this technique you don't need to rush take your time you get good results if you hold your pen flat but sometimes when the image is really detailed you might need to just use that nib end a little bit more just take your time to get those areas colored so we can put that down put the lid back on i'm going to use rich razzle berry for the flowers and i'm going to add a color to those areas you can see how that's working. I love this technique and I don't use it often enough. And I remember the very first time I saw this technique demonstrated, it was a wow moment, an absolute woohoo. That's super. Because I'd invested in these Stampin' Right markers 11 years ago just celebrated my 11th anniversary and I invested in these markers 11 years ago and I'm still using them now our Stampin' Right markers are refillable so whilst they are an investment they last a long time and they are refillable the Stampin' Blends alcohol markers are not refillable they are consumable items once they're done unfortunately they are in the bin so I've added that colour and now I'm going to give it a huff as if I was cleaning my glasses I'm going to go <sighs> and give it a huff <sighs> and the moisture from my breath just re-moistens the ink Fabulous. and isn't that a wow moment if you've not seen that before and apologies even if you have seen it before because it's still a wow moment I think it's a really fabulous technique to use. It gives you a really good use of your Stampin' Right markers. Just another look, another look to that image, which when you look at it in black, just looks a little bit, you know, unimaginative, I guess. Now I've decided that I'm going to add hello there to the bookmark. What I wanted to do with these cards was have a card that you could send to somebody for that moment in time maybe a, um, a thank you card a birthday card that they could receive the recipient could receive and have for that moment in time but could also have a bookmark that would last and they could use for however long it lasted I'm using a bookmark at the moment in my paperback that I received as a swap years and years and years ago 
and it's just one of my favourites. So bookmarks do last a long time. So I've just used the same technique for my hello there. <sighs> give it a huff and give it a stamp. Now I just can't quite see whether we're straight, but I'm just going to go for it. There we go. Lovely. So we've got two. Hold that up so you can see the two colours. Super. Now I'm going to um, punch both of these pieces. But before I do that, whilst we're stamping, I'm going to stamp the a heartfelt thank you sentiment to the front. So let's do that and then we can do some punching. And at first glance, I thought, oh, that's quite a long sentiment. Will it fit my piece? But it fits nicely. Again, I'm holding the marker flat. I'm holding the stamp up. Some nice coverage there and I'm going to give it a huff and we'll just line that up on that piece and hope it's somewhere near straight because I'm sat quite a way back there we go it's almost straight I think I've got away with it now I'm just going to reach for my punch and this is the um I think it's called the best punch is it called the best punch let's have a look this one carried, I think this one carried over. Ooh, no, I'm not sure. I need to tell you where this is in the catalogue. I think this is one that carried over from the um, Christmas mini book. So let me just grab that. I'm pretty sure. Yes, it did. Yes, it was in the Christmas or the seasonal mini. The very best trio stamp uh, punch and it's carried over and what that means is it's still available after the catalogue has ceased but it's not in any publication other than we have one page in this catalogue if I can quickly find it we do have one page in here discover more page 74 so this is the uh, January to April mini on page 74 it does list some of the items that carried over mo the most popular products from the previous catalogues are still available so it's the only place that it's actually in a publication the best very best trio punch that's 20 pounds and i love this punch it's really versatile but i'm going to give you a tip so i want to actually for the sentiment i want to punch all four corners of both of these pieces and i want to think about um these two corners being a pair and these two corners being a pair so I just want to think about that and I want to punch so you pop it right into the punch and this is a bit of a CPR punch it's a straight down on the table punch so you want to punch it you've got your fancy corner now what you want to do is flip it and punch again and that gives you two mirror image matching corners. Now I want to do another twin at this bottom and flip. I haven't rotated round. I've thought about it as a pair. Punch, flip, punch. Back to the front, turn it. Punch, flip, punch. So I'm going to do that exactly the same on my coloured piece. Punch, flip, punch. Now I can go to the bottom. Punch, flip, punch. And you get matching. You get so that these shapes are the same but mirror imaged. If you rotate, you actually get mismatched corners if I can find a scrap I probably can't because I've cleared them all away I could demonstrate what I mean um, let me just see let's have a look I've got um, a piece here of really scrappy some really scrappy paper let me just quickly chop some of that down this is not stamping up it's just a notepad so if I punch, 
and then rotate and then rotate and then rotate rather than flipping my corners are all odd I've got an inny and an outy and I've got an inny and an outy there and they just don't match so you need to flip to get mirror images so that's my tip and I'm going to do exactly the same for the bookmark but just at the top on this one so I'm going to punch and flip and two nice matching mirror image two innies two outy shoulders punch and flip and punch now I'm going to glue I'm not done with the punch yet I'm going to glue my um, tops to the bottoms actually let's reach for have I got some stamp and seal that's empty gosh I'm really running out of glue here stamp and seal plus Ooh. too much pressure let's try that again that's a really good advert isn't it but I just added too much pressure there it's a very strong tape runner and that just pulled up my card stock let me just get rid of that <laughs> trying to get <laughs> it's so strong it doesn't want to leave me so let's just do a light touch with that and that's all it needs and we'll stick that to the base that's why I'm a real fan of Tombow is because you get wiggle room if you're lining things up you get that wiggle room Again, we'll just do a light touch there. Oh, doing it again. Too much pressure. I'm too heavy-handed with my with my tape runners. I do this all the time. There we go. That's better. Nice light touch. Then we'll just line that up. And I'm going to just finished the bookmark using the very best trio and you'll see that we also have a squared off corner but we also have this little slot and on the front of the um, trio punch we have this line here and I like to look at these indentations here so what I'm going to do is slot my bookmark in and line it up so that I put when I punch the slot is central now I could measure that I could go to all the trouble of measuring and putting myself um, a mark in the middle but what I'm doing as I'm sitting here is I'm lining up the edges with those indentations and I'm going to just punch and that should give me a nice slot in the middle so the indentations here allowed me I just pop that in I'm just going to stand up and see if that works on camera let's have a look so slid that in and I was just looking at these indentations here let's have a look at the camera and I was lining up the bookmark there is a backstop and I was just lining up the, bu the bookmark so it was central with these notches to the sides oh hello I can see Helen's watching and Carol is watching hello Carol I've not seen you watch me before you're welcome to my channel and yes it is if we're talking about the wow moment it is a super technique and one that's often overlooked so I'm glad that you've commented that you like it so there we are we've now got all of the components pretty much we just need some pretty flowers from that gorgeous shimmer paper and I'm going to use the flower punch that I used on the original one which is the flower punch that coordinates with the, the stamp set that I originally used which I got out and now I've put away now I can't find it for heaven's sake <laughs> this must happen to everybody that demonstrates live um, flowering friendship flowers of friendship where did I put it oh if you can see it shout it coordinates with that and it's from the annual catalogue and i just need three flowers so i'm going to pop that all the way in and punch two flowers 
and then I just need and a spare leaf I just need one more flower and a, it's a small one so I can just line that up there and I just need that one I don't need this half a flower but I may well use that on another project well I don't know where that stamp set's disappeared to unless I put it straight back in probably put it there it is so that punch coordinates perfectly with this stamp set flowers of friendship and this is in the annual catalog um, and it's really super and one thing I will point out is that when you punch the small flower the petals actually do um, marry up with this big flower on this stamp so you can actually use it um, and the small ones of this one marry up with this one so it's not just for this image here so that's just a little tip and I'm going to just stick everything together now I'm going to grab some ribbon I've got a lovely tip I've shown you before using our I think I showed you last week using our friendly clothes peg I'm going to take some ribbon I've clipped that on and use a paper clip fancy paper clip just to hold my ribbon and I'm just going to snip a piece of ribbon off spool I'll just take that little bit off there it's creased and I need some linen thread I'll leave that on the spool for the moment and I'm going to thread the ribbon through the slot it's the other reason I like that slot on the punch it is a slot and it takes a piece of ribbon nicely it's not a little tiny hole that you've got to poke and faff with it slots through really nicely. Now here's my friendly helper, my wooden sprung clothes peg, and I'm going to just ask the clothes peg to hold my ribbon still for me while I tie my baker's twine, not baker's twine, linen thread round. So this is something that um, I use quite often because, I don't know about you, but sometimes it's too fiddly when you're on your own and you've got nobody to help and hold that and you just want it to sit still I can tie a nice tight knot and now I can tie a bow and it shouldn't be too difficult now I can let the peg go back to its home and as always with tying anything it's 10% tying and 90% faffing at the end I'm just going to faff with that thread and faff with that ribbon and just pull that down and I will just make those ends a bit neater. Just take that end off. There we are. So thank you Peg, that was really handy. I'll just shorten those ends a little bit. Not too much. So if your fingers are a little bit stiff or you just faff, you find it too faffy tying, grab yourself a clothes peg. I've just decorated this one with some old washi tape. Um, the sprung one's really handy. I've got this one here. It's even handier. <laughs> it's a giant peg. My friend Helen um, bought me this really handy so there's our bookmark and our sentiment now just needs some decoration once we've stuck it on so bookmarks ready to go you can slot that in the pocket super easy now we're going to pop the sentiment on and what we need to do is have our bookmark inside so we can see where it is and we need to position our sentiment I'm going to pop that on with dimensionals and we need to take care where we put them we don't want a dimensional here because it will stick to the bookmark so we want a dimensional here and here on the shoulders and then here at the bottom. So if I just turn that over, I know that that's the top so and that's the bottom. And if I pop my dimensionals here and here along the shoulders and then I can pop a couple on the bottom wherever I like. Squeeze them with your thumbnail, it makes them easier to peel. And then just take care where those dimensionals are that you're not sticking them to the actual bookmark and pop your sentiment on 
and the bookmark should still run freely behind because you've not stuck the sentiment to it now we're going to just jolly these flowers up a little bit they're lovely they're pretty they're sparkly but they're flat and boring so we're going to make them three-dimensional with a ball ended scoring tool this is one that goes with my stamp um my stamping up scoreboard this is the ball ended tool that goes with take your pick so i can swap that um pointy piercing end for my ball end tool there we go and um, so using a ball ended tool and i'm going to use my old faithful whiteboard rubber i've got two of them one's more damaged than the other so i use this one and i'll pop my flowers on and i will carefully because sometimes you can go all the way through just give it a gentle poke in the middle and you can see already that they're looking a bit more three-dimensional now we'll finish those off so that gives that a start and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to use my thumbnail if you haven't got any thumbnails you might use your spatula end of your um take your pick tool or a pair of closed snips to fold those petals round and you just want to fold them in half give them a little squeeze and you can see that that just gives each flower a bit of dimension much nicer and i know they'll get squished in an envelope but they will pop back up once that's out of the envelope they will still have some dimension to them they're not going to be completely flat and i'm going to double layer this one and i'm going to leave this one single and i will finish off with a gem now one thing about this lovely gorgeous sparkly paper is it doesn't absorb um the wet glue just quite as easily as regular cardstock so i will use a glue dot just to stick these to each other my glue dots are quite cool my craft room is quite cool today it's not a warm craft room so if your glue dots are quite cool sometimes they can be a bit brittle and not as sticky if that's the case then you can either get your heat tool if you've got one to hand and just on heat setting one you can warm up your glue dots you can warm them like this if you find your glue dots are not sticky that's why it's because they're probably a bit cool glue dots like to be reasonably warm and it just warms up the adhesion and i'm going to stick them to the project using glue dots also this um shimmery paper has quite a smooth back to it as well so um it doesn't like tombow will stick it it will absolutely stick it but it will take longer for the adhesion to work so i find glue dots are the better adhesive for it and that's it there so that looks pretty and we'll just add some gems and i'm going to use some of these uh, flowers adhesive backed trinket gems as usual i've taken them out the original packet and popped them into a sleeve from a photograph album a really cheap photo album now these trinkets are lovely they're really quite chunky and the adhesive on them the adhesive backing on them is great for paper but they don't like they really don't like this um plastic when I, when these arrived they'd all slid off and so i've painstakingly <laughs> picked them all up and reattached them and then i dropped them on the floor and they all slid off again but they do stick nicely to cardstock they just don't like and i think again it's a cool or warm thing they just don't seem to like that um stuff that they're stuck on so that's card number one really really easy you can alter this you can case it you've got the basics you know how to use your dsp 
for that front so my tips are just watch the direction when you're flipping over your piece to go underneath if you've got a directional piece and you've got two different patterns in your pack mix and match the pieces in your pack and have a go and have a rummage in your other packs to find something that will coordinate I think you'll agree that this chicken wire and this hessian sack pattern from the day at the farm is quite um, an unusual choice to go with the pretty flowers the other side but the um, chicken wire in the hessian sack go really well with that pretty countryside look so that's card number one and again i'll just show you this one that was from class using the other stamp set so i just stamped and colored with blends and popped a sentiment on the front so same but different as always now my second card let me just move these wet stamps out of the way and i can deal with those later my second card is this one and we're using up that really lovely DSP from Celebration it is called Favoured Flowers and it's quite darkly coloured I only have a few pieces left in my pack I have this piece this design and these pieces have the dark backgrounds so this one has a really lovely dark background that's gorgeous but too dark for this card this one beautiful these remind me of the folk art paintings that we see here in England on canal barges and um, the original gypsy Roma Roma gypsy um, caravans really lovely folk art so gorgeous papers but what I wanted to show in class was that some of the papers have a lighter background and they can be used with a fold to show off the back side as well now this is the last um card i had with this piece of dsp because like i said i ran a class so all of that dsp went so this one i'm going to make is slightly different and i already have the pieces cut so you don't need to watch me actually cut anything to size but i what i will do is i will cut the dsp i will cut a piece of dsp just so that you can get the sizes but i will be using this one so this one's really beautiful again those lovely colors we've got fresh freesia in there calypso coral petal pink and we've got a couple of greens i think they are let me have a look uh mossy meadow and evening evergreen so there's lovely dark greens there and we've got the reverse side is fresh freesia and my card base is fresh freesia my bookmark is going to be fresh freesia with the reverse side we're going to need a piece of ribbon and this is just an off cut when I trimmed this piece off I had some pieces left over so I just used a piece that we're going to use to decorate the bookmark with as you can see my bookmark on the other side I've decorated so we've got a double sided bookmark and I chose to when I send this card I will choose to pop the bookmark in this way so you're seeing the DSP and then you have a surprise second sentiment and that second sentiment will stand alone once the card is finished with for a birthday so i thought carefully about the sentiments that i used so we'll just pop that one there for the moment so let me run through the card pieces a regular size card opening your regular way so a portrait style card base in a color to coordinate with your dsp now the piece of dsp measures i'll give you the measurements 20 centimeters by 14 and a half i'll double check that height but i usually do trim down to 14 and a half yes it is and i didn't do any measured scoring for this i simply folded my piece in half and used my bone folder to score I then folded my piece of DSP back on itself edge to edge and scored here I then popped my DSP in the trimmer and I will just demonstrate that to trim off a diagonal piece so my piece needs to go in the trimmer with this center in the cutting um, guide and I need to angle it round to wherever you want it will all depend on how much of the reverse side you want 
to be visible I could cut it off even further down and have a smaller pocket or a shallower pocket I could cut it right to the corner and just have you would end up with just a diagonal like this so it'd be a really tiny pocket so just decide there's no measuring involved with this this is why it's such an easy card you only need to measure 20 centimeters by 14 and a half fold it in half and score fold it back on itself and score and then cut a diagonal right from the center so open it back out and cut a diagonal right from the center to wherever you want along this side so no measuring just trimming so that's that piece so you can see if I'd have gone shallower I would have had more DSP showing but a shallower pocket if I'd have gone higher up and gone across to here I would have had less DSP showing because when I folded this back it would have come to here and I would have had less DSP showing just on this little uh, reverse DSP showing just a little triangle at this corner so you design your own pocket for this one now I will give you some more measurements so that's our base some more measurements for your bookmark your bookmark on this one has um, a pocket of a certain width so what you need to do is take your ruler because you've not measured that that pocket you folded it in half you need to measure what you're left with so five centimeters I'm measuring across from there to there five centimeters so I know my bookmark needs to be much narrower than five centimeters and I think in this instance I went with four centimeters so I've measured four centimeters for my bookmark width so that I know it will slide in that pocket really nicely and I've cut myself a piece of coordinating cardstock and another piece of DSP which I'm going to use the reverse side the plainer side rather than the deeply patterned side you also need that little cut off and a piece of cardstock for the front sentiment now you can decorate this just how you want on the front I've chosen to use some of our really lovely rose gold foil cardstock speciality cardstock this is in the annual catalog and I'm going to just stamp a sentiment and punch using our label punch and of course for the bookmark you could choose to use uh, dies if you've got some dies the tag dies tail tailored tag dies are excellent for making bookmarks with but I've chosen to use some punches just for ease and a little tip for using this for the top so let's go ahead and decorate do some stamping and I'm going to use framed floret stamp set because it's got some really lovely big sentiments I wanted a stamp set with big sentiments and I'm going to use wishes for a beautiful birthday again and I'm going to use this floral image and I'm going to use so lucky to call you friend again from that stamp set because I think it's a really nice um, sentiment now I am going to use stays on for my sentiments and I'm going to give you a tip with stays on and photopolymer stamps because they're not best friends and I'm also going to use fresh freesia as a coordinating um, ink so tone on tone with the floral image so let's go ahead and stamp that floral image first it is simply a background I can stamp it straight in this case I think I'm going to stamp off stamp on so I'm just going to grab a piece of scrap bear with me just a little piece of scrap grid sheet here that I can use to stamp off stamp on so stamp tap 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 stamp off and I will just bring in my stamp and pierce mat because we're using photopolymer. Let me do that again. Yep, stamp off and then stamp on. And I'm going to stamp that about a third of the way up. So we've got a very nice, very pale, just tone on tone image. And I could stamp that again. I could cover the back of this, but I'm just going to leave it with one. I'm now going to 
stamp my um, so lucky to call you friend sentiment using stays on the reason I've got stays on out is because I'm using foil for my sentiment for my main sentiment on the front and memento just doesn't dry quite as quickly on the front you can use it but I found that stays on was better now a tip with stays on if your stays on ink pad is not juicy um, and you're using photopolymer photopolymer always sticks to your card it's a very sticky um, rubber it's a very sticky what's the word material and stays on ink is also quite sticky and if you don't stamp quickly it can as happened in my class for some of my ladies it can actually stick to the card and peel off and tear your cardstock so you do need to ink your stamp and I tap 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 a lot with stays on because it's a felt or a cloth ink pad and the ink needs to rise to the top and by patting it it rises to the top so it's really nice and juicy and I'm going to stamp that sentiment quickly and lift it off if I leave if I leave the sentiment it's actually lifted off really nicely this time it was just my look in class that my ink pad and my um, photopolymers were just really sticky I think my ink pad was perhaps not juicy enough um, I have two stays on and I probably grabbed the one that wasn't really juicy but just that's just something to watch if you find that your photopolymer stamps are sticking to your cardstock and peeling it off and tearing the cardstock you either need to re-ink your stays on or you need to be a bit quicker so that's that sentiment on the bookmark and I'm going to stamp this sentiment on the foil and you could hear that as I lifted that from my desk again it just photopolymer is a really really sticky material so again we need to ink really well really really tap get lots of ink on that stamp I'm just looking in the light to see it's really shiny and wet and I'm going to stamp that and lift it quickly I actually smudged that I think it wiggled and I just don't know whether I can get that punched out Ooh, I might just have enough I'm actually going to punch I'm going to stamp that again because I wiggled that as I put it down so tap 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 and decide whether you want the flat edges to the top or the bottom and the great thing about um, photopolymer is that you can actually line them over a, a punched shape have I left that on mm. there we go therein lies error number two because I left that on but I didn't give it much pressure because I'm worried about that sticking down I've missed part of the sentiment so here we go I'm a crafter just like anybody else we all make mistakes things go wrong so I'm going to rescue this by I think I had another kit somewhere on my desk with a piece I've put that down somewhere else away. here we go so I've got some more pieces of that rose gold foil this one is the matte finish this one is the mirror finish so I'm going to go third time lucky for stamping this sentiment here we go and tap 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 plenty of ink pop that in the middle I'm using a stamping pierce mat so I should have good connection it's still a little bit fady in the middle but we're gonna go with this one and I'm just going to pop that to one side to dry so there we go I'm a crafter just the same as everyone else mistakes happen things go wrong but it's a piece of card at the end of the day it's not anything to lose sleep over now I'm going to show you how I made the bookmark um, just a couple of little things that I did here I wanted to um, pop some ribbon on the front and I want some coordinating ribbon for just a little bit of a loop at the top 
So I'm just going to grab that fresh freezer ribbon again and I'm just going to cut myself a little snip. You don't need much. And I'm going to decide that that's going to be the top, I think. And that's going to be the bottom. And I'm going to... Let me have a think. Oh, I, yes, I remember now. I'm going to put both of these into the punch to punch the top so i'm actually going to take real care i'm going to use the punch to punch the shaped top and i'm going to just slide this in from the top so instead of sliding my cardstock in like this to punch a shape i'm going to slide it from the back and i'm just going to very carefully line it up so that i get these little shoulders if i can point to them these shoulders here just lined to the edge of the card nicely but without punching my sentiment away and I've got that nice shaped top I'm going to do the same with my piece of DSP and to slide that in from behind and I'm just going to slide the very top in and line that up and then I've got two nicely shaped pieces I'm just going to just think that that's slightly wider I'm just looking at this piece of DSP and I'm thinking it's slightly wider but I'm going to go with it it's only slightly when I stick it down I'll only have a very slight edge so I'm going to stick my little snip of ribbon I'm going to fold it over and I'm going to just stick it inside and I'm going to use a little tiny piece of tear and tape or I could use um, stamp and seal plus Let's see. just a tiny piece just like that that's all I'm going to do and it will just stick that down I'm leaving a little bit exposed so I can just fold it over and that should just anchor it and now I'm going to glue those as a sandwich so you need just a piece of tear and tape or stamp and seal stamp and seal plus just something to fold that over and anchor it down and then we're going to sandwich and for that I'm going to use Tombow don't worry this isn't the right side this is the emergency side and that's our right side with our image on and then I can use my wiggle rim, if I can pick that up, use my wiggle rim to slide that into position, lining those nicely punched top shaped pieces. And that's lovely and that's nicely sandwiched. I'll give that some pressure. And I can see that I've got that edge is slightly wider now if I wanted to I could use my snips to trim that off I'm actually going to leave it I'm actually going to leave it and I'm going to decorate the bottom using that extra piece of DSP just as an extra piece of pattern on the bottom you don't need too much glue there that's that there we go and it just uses those pieces of DSP up. Very simple bookmark, but really pretty. And that will slide into my pocket. So I'm going to go ahead and assemble the front of this card now. So I've got my card with my opening to the right and my crease to the left. And I'm going to, and I've got my piece of folded DSP and I'm just going to turn that over and I'm going to put some glue on the back here. And I do think this tumble is going to just last me for this demonstration. I was doing some making yesterday and I kept thinking to myself, I need to get a new glue out because I'm going to do a live tomorrow and it's about to run out and I think it just has. Just bear with me while I find another one in the graveyard. Let's see how much we've got left in this one. I always use up my X-Class 
tombos so when they get too low for class I bring them home and use them myself so we're sticking that down just face down like this and we can put some pressure on now we're going to make that pocket now I said you could if you wanted to you could make a double pocket which I will do for this card so instead of putting glue all over this piece I'm actually going to just pop some glue along this very skinny edge and the bottom I'm going to make a double pocket and I'm going to show you what I'm going to pop in that pocket with any luck. So just that. So if you didn't want a double pocket, you would put glue all over this piece and then stick it down. And that's exactly what we did in class. So we've got glue underneath here and glue underneath here. And then we want to make that front pocket so we want to just pop glue down this side and this side so again just the right angle pieces not the diagonals there we are and we can fold that over it's like a card and a gift all in one we can pop our just got some glue on the back of there let me just rub that off with my blue eraser there we go we can pop our bookmark in and I like it with that DSP showing, so it just matches what's behind it. So we can pop that in. And we've got an extra pocket here, and I'm hoping that this will fit in. It might be too long. It might just be too long. The other day in the shops, I found this pack of sparklers. And I thought they'd be really handy. They'd be really cute to add to a card, maybe a sparkler or two. They're a little bit long for that card, so maybe I would keep those for one of those long DL cards. But aren't they cute? It's a pack of ten sparklers. Thought they'd be really fun for a birthday card. I actually have a small a packet somewhere. It's one of my drawers. I'm not going to go rummaging. I'll leave that for another day. But I did have a packet somewhere. I just thought it was to that my right hand side no it's not there I have smaller ones um but we'll leave that i could pop something else in there i did my swaps with emery boards i could pop something like that in there or even a second bookmark i'm going to give this a punch and finish off the card so i'm going to go with curves to the top um let me have a think let's have a think shall we go curves to the top so it matches the direction of the bookmark See how that fits in, that sentiment just fits in. Give that a punch, curves to the top, so it kind of echoes the bookmark. On my original I've done curves to the sides, not that it really matters. I'll just pop that to one side and we're going to pop some ribbon underneath just for a bit of texture. And I'm just going to lay it underneath. You can lay it with... Um, the tails to either end it doesn't really matter and again I'll just pop a little bit of oops a little bit of um stamp and seal plus there just to hold my ribbon down. I've done two stripes so that I can pop the ribbon like this and just curl it over and just this and I'm going to pop my sentiment up on dimensionals again card done so another use a really good use of using a good chunk of, of designer series paper let's not leave it in the packet let's not keep it just for stroking let's use it up on these cards good offer on at the moment spend 45 pounds and there is several designer series paper packs to choose from for free i've shown you just three of them and there we are card number two let me get rid of some of these bits so same but different both have a pretty bookmark with an extra sentiment that bookmark will stand on its own after the birthday has gone my first card was a thank you card and the bookmark on this one, the first one had no sentiment and my second one that I made today had a hello there. Again, a sentiment that will stand on its own 
after the thank you um, card has been finished. So I hope you've enjoyed Cards with Bookmarks today. I've enjoyed sharing that with you and I hope that that will encourage you to use up some of your DSP. Let's see if those cards are in shot and you can see them. Yes, you can. Lovely. So I hope you've enjoyed that. Um, I hope you are encouraged to use up some of your patterned paper. I'd be really interested to see what you make, how yours turn out with using different stamp sets. So you need stamp sets with sentiments and little images and designer series paper and some cardstock. Some punches for making your um, bookmarks and sentiments pretty or some dies, some label dies. And I'd love to see what you make. Please feel free to post your makes on the Crafty Beehive group page. You can see that it's linked from my page. You're welcome to post on there. So thank you very much for joining me. I'm not going to turn the camera around again because it keeps cutting out when I try and do that. So I will say goodbye and thank you for watching. I won't be here next week. Um, I've got something else happening next week, um, but I will endeavour to be here the week after. Thanks for watching everyone. Bye for now.